Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to have an experience with using cross-validation with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now when we're talking about cross-validation, what we need to understand is a little bit about how it works, even though we're really not trying to go over the theoretical aspects of different machine learning ideas. So when we're talking about cross-validation, what we're doing here is you're going to split your data into a certain number of pieces. So we could say we could set K, for example, to the number 10, which means we're dividing our data into 10 parts. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to use nine parts for training the data. So we'll put TR here, and we're going to use one part for testing it. That's what we're going to use, test. And what happens is that because you have these 10 pieces, the nine parts you use for training and the one part you use for testing rotates. So for example, the first time through, maybe one through nine is training, and then the, the tenth part is for testing. Then it'll be, for example, like two through 10, and then part number one will be for testing. And it'll keep going like that all the way through. And when, after you have your results for the 10 times that you do this, because remember, we set our K to 10, you take the average of this to find out the overall performance of the model. And so by doing that, you're able to reduce some of these problems that we can see right here when you only have the train test set as an example. So when you have a sample size that is too small, it can often hurt. It hurts all algorithms when you have a small data set. When your sample size is too big, it hurts uh, complex algorithms. Although it's usually not too much of a problem, but a lot of times you, you lose performance in terms of the speed at which you can calculate things. Uh, when the, you have the wrong data, it also hurts everybody because you know bad data means bad results. When you have too many variables, it also hurts complex models because it's too complicated. And then you have the bias various trade-off. Bias is when like the model kind of ignores the data basically and kind of always gets the same results. And variance is when the model is too sensitive to individual data sets and it changes too much. And what happens is that you can't, uh, it can't generalize to other contexts. So uh, cross-validation is one way of doing this. And this example that I explained up here is called K-fold cross-validation, where you set your K to whatever number you want. Now, having said that, let's get into the actual details of the code and see how this works. So down here, you can see the different uh, modules we're going to be using, pandas, numpy, uh, we got to import our data in, in line number three there. Then of course we got to do our train test split. And what we're going to essentially do here is we're going to use linear regression. Just keep using a simple algorithm to learn how to use this particular tool. And of course, uh, we have to have a metric to see the performance. So we're going to use the mean squared error for the performance. And then these last two, lines right here is for the k-fold cross-validation and so that's what we're going to be using here all right so now that we know what we're going to be doing let's go ahead and do this so we're going to start by importing our data here so we're using the psid data set and here's what it looks like so we got some some integer numbers personal number their age education earnings hours how many kids they had and of course marriage and so what we want to do is we want to try to predict people's earnings. That's our goal here using this, this particular data set. Well, we got to do some cleaning up here. We got to get rid of some of the, the NAs, of course. So you can see uh, NAs. And we got to convert the married variable to a dummy variable because we cannot put text inside the linear regression model for the module that we're using here. So here's how we fix this. In line number one, we're going to drop the NAs. In the line number two, if it says someone is not married, this right here, we want to put a zero. That's how we're making our dummy variable. In line number three, if somebody is married, we want a one there. That's why that one is there. So we'll have zero one, zero ones, whether someone is not married or married. Then of course, we want to make sure that um, when we fix this, that it's an integer type. Otherwise, we'll get an error message based on when I did this before the video. And then we're going to create a new variable called uh, married, Mary. And that's what this is right here. And in uh, line six, we just display what we've done. Okay. So here it is. You can see we made some changes. 
Uh, there's no NAs. Of course, you couldn't see those beforehand. I got to admit that. But uh, over here, we have this new variable called Mary right here. That's what we're going to set right here. It's off to the side. Maybe we didn't need that, but hey, it's there. We're going to use it. So that's how that's going to be. All right. Now for our next important part here, we have to deal with the education. Now, if you look here again, you can't see any examples right here. But sometimes when there was a, an error, like they, they did not know what someone's education was, they would put like a 98 or a 99. That just means error. So it can mess up the results a great deal. So also for the number of kids, it's just they put that number there. Oh, so you can see one example right here. If you look for kids here, they put 98. Now, I think we all can agree that almost nobody can have 98 children. What this 98 means is that there was an error like they didn't know or the person didn't want to tell how many kids they had. So they put this ridiculously high number there. If you don't take this into account, you'll have some serious problems with your results. So what we're doing here in line number one is if the value for kids is greater than 90, we just uh, we just said, you know, in place, true, uh, replace it. Uh, and then right here, uh, we also said the same thing here. Uh, we put in place true. So if we take a look at this now, you can see now that that number, which used to be 48854, 48, 48, 48, 48 you know, we removed it. So you can see that it's gone. That's what we did in this particular example. So we, oh, we dropped it. Ah, there it is. So we dropped it. That's what I did when the values were really high. We could have replaced it with something else in, in case we really needed it. But you know, you can see here we have 4,855 rows. And we still have 4,528 rows. We still have a large amount of data. And we're not trying to be scientific. We're much more focused on learning how to use the actual tools here. Now, for our final trick, trick excuse me, we're going to separate our independent and dependent variables. So we put that right here. So these are the variables we're going to use for prediction, age, education level, hours, number of kids, and whether they're married or not. And we're trying to predict earnings. So if I had to explain the theory, we're going to say, you know, as age, education, number of hours, number of kids and marriage status, if they all go up, so if someone's married, the earnings should also increase as well. That's kind of the theory here. So what we're going to do here in the model development to make this as simple as possible, we're going to make two models. We're going to make one model where we use all of the data and calculate the mean squared error. And then we're going to make another model where we do a, a training test set and look at that. And then we're going to repeat this process using the, the, K, the, uh, the K fold, fold cross-validation as well. So we just go right here. So here's our results here. So we make an instance of our regression. We put in our, our data here with the fit uh, method. Then we, of course, um, calculate our uh, mean squared error using um, our true value, true y's and our y predicted values, etc., like that. And then we output the results and you can see right there that this is our mean squared error. So whether or not this, this number doesn't really need to make sense, we're going to use it for comparison purposes. So let's see here. So now for our second model, we're going to use all of the data. That's what we're going to do here. And we put the copy and paste that right here. And so this is mostly all the same stuff, except now we're doing a train test split in line one. We've gone over this code in other videos, so we're not going to talk about it too much here. We then had our regression fit like previously. Then we, of course, run our um, data right here. Y print looks y true equals y train, y print equals that. Okay, this should probably be the test. Let's see if it works with the test. Let's see here. Yeah, it's not going to work. Okay. Okay, here we go. And so when we run that, you can see we have our answer right here. You can see, so when we do the train test split, when we, when we remove 30% of the data from the overall training, you can see that we get a very large difference in number here. So this is, you know, 138. That's the first three digits here. This is 148. So you know, that seems like a large difference. Now for our final one, we're going to do K-fold uh, fold cross validation. And so we run this like so. 
So let me go through this and slow down a little bit here so this is nice and clear. So first we create a, a variable called cross validation and then we use of course this function here k fold the number of splits is 10 like in the example at the beginning of the video then we want to of course shuffle the data so that you know it's all spread out at random and then we have the the random state or the seed number right here as, as shown then we make something called scores so we can see the scores so we use the function cross underscore val underscore underscore score we're using regression that's the type of algorithm we're using this is the train and test set so we're using the whole thing the first time through our scoring metric is the, the mean squared error, and our CV is cross-validation, or in other words, the information for this is found up here in the first line. That's what that's doing there. And then the number of jobs is just one. That's for, like, I think, setting the processor. And then we're going to print the score. Now, something that's new here is that we're going to print the standard deviation as well. So I go ahead and I run this. And you can see here that when I use all the data, I have 10, uh, 10 uh, the, the full the, the k is at the 10 and you can see right here that this is the mean squared error which is very close to what we got up here which makes sense because we're using all the data and then over here we got the standard deviation which is actually very very large uh, for this context now if I want to see how this thing will do with the uh, train and test I just put in this and I, I do it again and so this time I'm using the, the, the split data. And so here you can see I got a score of 149 over here. That's very close to this. Very, very close, but a little bit higher. And so you can see how this changes things. So the main advantage of using this uh, K-fold cross-validation is to give you an idea of how well your model will generalize in the real world. You know, uh, it gives you some more assurance, if you will. And it's another way to, of course, if you have a small sample size or if you have any other kind of problems, it helps you to, again, deal with the bias variance trade-off. Now, our scores are not that great per se, but that might have more to do with the variables that we use to predict the independent variable, and we might have to make some adjustments to our model. But that really was not our point. Our goal here was to show you how you can use the, the cross-validation with Python, and then the details of what's appropriate and what's not, that is left for you as you do with your various contexts in which you want to use this tool. So let me summarize what we've talked about here and we will wrap up this video. So in this video, we learned about cross-validation, which is a tool for dividing your training set into various parts so that you can test them independently to get an overall idea of how your model will generalize if you were to use it. And so we use the PSID dataset from Pi dataset we had to deal here, we had to deal with um, setting up a dummy variable for one of our categorical variables. Down here we dealt with, you know, error codes that were used when data was not available for whatever reason. Of course, then we separated our, our train, or excuse me, we separated our independent and dependent variables here in this cell. Down here we did our regression model development. We did two different models. The first model used all the data. And then, of course, in this cell right here, this model did a train test split. And then we did our cross validation here. We did it two times. One where we used all the data, like in our first regression model. And then in the, the second time that we ran this cell right here, we used the data from the train test split. And each time we got numbers similar, which gives, gives us an idea of the type of values we can expect if we are going to generalize, generalize this model performance you know, in the real world. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you very much for watching and you take care.